Hey everyone, welcome to the Acid Base Balance Lecture brought to you by EMTPrep.com. We're going to do our best to simplify this information for you today. In teaching EMT and primarily paramedic students, I've found that this seems to be the most common topic that just really isn't taught well and really seems to be uh, something that confuses students. So today our goal is to give you a good foundational knowledge and we're not going to harp on too many details. It's just going to be kind of glossing over the, the main information that you should know regarding this topic. So what is pH? Well, that's a great question. The pH of blood or any other fluid is a measure of its hydrogen ion concentration. A pH of 7 is considered to be neutral when we're talking about fluids in general. However, when we're talking about humans, Blood pH is supposed to be between 7.35 and 7.45. That's what we would call a normal pH. So if our pH is too high or too low, we have some issues. If it's below 7.35, we consider that to be called acidotic. If the blood pH is higher than 7.45, we consider that to be alkalotic. So let's take a look at that in graph format. So this is the pH scale. You can see that it goes from 0 at the bottom to 14 at the top, with 7 being in the middle and considered neutral. Below 7, you're, you're getting into that acidotic environment, and above 7, you're getting into that alkalotic environment. Why is pH important? Well, our bodies are constantly working to maintain something called homeostasis. Homeostasis is just a funky word that means normal, a normal state. And sometimes our bodies have to work extra hard to maintain that normal state, like when we're sick or we're injured. And sometimes they don't have to work as hard to maintain that normal state, like when we're feeling healthy, eating well, sleeping well. Those things make our bodies work less hard to maintain that normal state. Again, something to keep in mind that we already a little bit touched on. While a pH of 7 is considered to be neutral, that is not normal for humans. A normal human pH, is a perfect normal I should say, is 7.4. A 0.5 shift up or down from 7.4 is not conducive to life. So how do our bodies manage all this stuff? Well, there's three primary ways to balance acids and bases in the human body. The first is the carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system, and that sounds a lot worse than it is. This is our body's easiest way to balance acids and bases, however, it's also the easiest system to overwhelm. If my memory serves me correctly, the carbonic acid to bicarbonate ion ratio is like 20 to 1. And so when we're trying to balance something that is so offset with a ratio like that, you can imagine that that system is easy to overwhelm when we tax it too much. The second way that we balance acids and bases is through our lungs. Way easier to say and remember than number one. Our lungs adjust pH by blowing off or holding on to CO2. We'll go over that more in a second. The third way is through our kidneys. Our kidneys are awesome organs that do a lot of things for us and they can balance acids and bases by reabsorbing, creating, or excreting bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. Food for thought here. Our bodies take in oxygen from the atmosphere. Usually 19.5 to 21.5% oxygen is floating around in the atmosphere. When we breathe that in, we create CO2 in our lungs. CO2 is an acid. Remember that. CO2 is an acid. When we don't breathe out enough CO2, we retain that acid, and in turn, that makes our bodies acidic. On our end tidal CO2 readings, we can see this. Remember, a normal end tidal CO2 reading is between 35 and 45. If your end tidal is greater than 45, your patient is experiencing respiratory acidosis. If your patient's end tidal CO2 is less than 35, they're experiencing respiratory alkalosis because they're breathing off too much CO2. So 
So good question here. Can we control end tidal CO2 readings? The answer is yes, to a degree. This lecture touches on the respiratory component, not a whole lot on the metabolic component. So with that in mind, here's a couple quick ways to remember how to regulate your patient's end tidal readings. If the patient's end tidal reading is low, go slow. You do this by decreasing your ventilation rate and depth. If their breathing is low, go slow. If the patient's end tidal CO2 reading is high, you fly. You do this by increasing your ventilation rate and depth. So if their end tidal reading is high, you fly with your ventilations. So again, please keep in mind, in EMS, we don't get the full picture of a patient's overall acid-base balance and that's because we don't do arterial blood gases in the field. I hope this has kind of brought just a good information overview to you on acid-base balance. If you have any questions, please check us out, emtprep.com, and we'd love to hear you if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. You can email us anytime, info at emtprep.com. Thanks so much, guys.